Hello everybody, it's Forz or Dave here and welcome back to another OBS tutorial. Today I'm going to be running down the best settings for recording gameplay on your PC in OBS Studio 19.0.3. There'll be a link in the description to go download this piece of software. It is, in my opinion, the best piece of software you can use to record your PC gameplay because it doesn't use uh, uploads of CPU uh, resources in comparison to some other pieces of software and it also gives you uh, decent file sizes so you're not filling up your hard drives or uh, really bottlenecking your hard drives with too much uh, file size. So this is the newest version of OBS and we're just going to be jumping into the settings and I'm going to be showing you guys uh, what I'm running to give you guys the best quality. So first thing you're going to want to do is open up OBS Studio. Make sure you're running the 64-bit version you can see up here. Uh, assume you're running a 64-bit system which I think everyone is these days. Um, when you download OBS you'll have two versions. A lot of people just go straight to the 32-bit and don't realize you can open up a 64-bit version. So uh, when you search for it in your start menu, just search for OBS and then you should see there's a 64-bit and a 32-bit version. Once it's open, you then want to go to your settings when they open up. And in the general section, there isn't really anything that is too important. You can read through this kind of stuff and see what you like. This is nothing to do with uh, the actual recording. It's just basically how OBS runs and some little settings here so you can you can deal with that how you please stream i'm not teaching you guys how to stream today so this isn't important output is the first important tab that we need to look into so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to change uh you're going to set this to advanced the output mode uh on simple mode you don't get access to many options and it's not great that's not what i want so you want to put it on advanced so we have more control over all our settings then go to the recording tab and make sure the type is set to standard. Uh, you can set your recording path. Ideally, put it on a separate hard drive to your OS um, if you can. If you don't have a separate hard drive to your, OS, to your OS, then don't worry. Just do it to there. You'll just get a bit better performance if you have it on a different hard drive. So I've got basically a hard drive specifically for, for recordings. Um, put your recording format to MP4. I've also been told that MKV works as well. So uh, you can research this up if you want. But I always use MP4 because it always works with my editing software perfectly. Um, audio tracks, you select here how many audio tracks you want. So this is basically how many audio sources do you have. So for me, I have my uh, my gameplay audio, so just whatever's coming out of my PC. Um, I've got my uh, Discord or like TeamSpeak or Skype audio, so other, my friends speaking. And then I've also got my, uh, my mic, so as you guys can hear me at the moment. So I have three. A lot of you guys will probably just have two because you won't be able to split the... Um, uh, or maybe you just won't want to split the game audio and the Discord audio. If you want to know how to do that, um, then search up Voice Meter um, Banana. It's a bit of software you can use. Uh, just search about to use that. I'm not going to be giving you a rundown of that today, as I've said in previous tutorials. Um, but it is what I use to get mixed uh, more tracks, basically. Uh, the encoder, I'm using NVENC H264. You need to have a new NVIDIA um graphics card to use this. I'm not sure exactly which graphics cards onwards you can use this on, but I think you, you have to you have to have a fairly new one. Um, so if, as long as you've not got a really old one, you should be fine and be able to use this. If not, then you might have to search up a tutorial for X264. I'm not going to be giving a rundown of that today. Uh, if you have an AMD card, you should have an AMD option here, and there's also an option you might have Quick Sync. But I'm going to be running down the NVENC uh, options here. Oh, there's someone going onto a game on Steam. I probably should have closed that before. But anyway, we'll carry on. Uh, I'm not rescaling my output because I'm recording it at uh, 1080p. Uh, even if you are going to rescale, do not do it here. Um, I've seen a lot of people do it here. Do not do it here. Leave it as 1920 by 1080 or whatever your monitor size is. And then we get into the actual main settings, which are going to give you what, what quality is your video going to have. So I'm going to be using CQP, which stands for Constant Quality Presets. What this means is we're going to be recording the game and the software is going to main is going to vary the bit rate of the video in order to maintain a level of quality. The lower this number goes, the better the quality. 18 is a really good number. Um, I'd go with 18. If you have issues, you can bump up a little bit, maybe to 20. I wouldn't go higher than maybe like 23, or maybe maybe 25 at a push. It's really down to what you think looks best for you. I think 18 just looks great. Um, so the bitrate of the video, if the bitrate's higher, then you'll end up with a bigger file size. So obviously lowering this, Increasing the quality means you'll get bigger file sizes. And then also for games that record, that are more fast paced and there's more going on, the, it will require more bit rate to maintain the same quality and therefore you'll get a bigger file size. So adjust this as you as you please. Keyframe interval, leave it at zero, that just makes it auto. That's perfectly fine for what we're doing because we're not streaming. Preset, some people might look at this and be like, oh, I'll go high quality or Blu-ray, that's gonna be really, really good. Just leave it on default. 
it will make the software or basically the NVENC encoder decide what's best depending on how your PC is running. That's what I've heard at least. So if that's not true, you know, don't shoot the messenger. That's just what I've heard from other sources. Profile, some people seem to run this on main, but I think you should be running on high because high is the profile used for high definition audio, uh, high definition video, sorry. Um, so yeah, run this on high. Level, leave it at auto. I uncheck two pass encoding because I don't really see any I don't really see any change having this on or off, but in my head, using two-pass encoding will use up more of my CPU power, and it's not really changing the quality, it doesn't seem for me, so I leave it off. GPU, I leave this at zero. This is basically deciding which C which GPU to leave. So having it on zero will select your first GPU. I only have one GPU, so that's what I want it to be. And then B frames, you want to leave that on two. That's just what it is, auto. And that's all these settings in the recording. And then go to audio and just bump all the tracks up to 320 you know you may as well bump them all up even if you're only using two because you never know you might end up with another track and if you haven't if you forgot to put it on 320 then you lose some audio quality here i think you should just have the best audio quality you can have because audio quality in my opinion trumps video quality in almost all scenarios so that's all of those settings um to actually select your audio devices you're going to be selecting them in here um so sample rate make sure this is the same as whatever devices you have selected um so mine's 48 kilohertz for all of my devices. You can check that in your Windows sound settings uh, down here. Um, channels, I just keep it on stereo. Uh, and then I've got, as I said, I've got two desktop devices. Um, so this is voice meter input and cable input. This is both from uh, the voice meter thing, which I mentioned earlier. So yeah, go look that up if you want to be able to split your audio. So one, one of these is my gameplay. One of these is my Skype or whatever my kind of uh, my team speak kind of stuff going on. And then I've got my mic selected and then I don't have any more mics. So that's three audio input devices. Next, we'll go to video. My base canvas resolution and my output are the same because I just want to record at 1080p and my monitor's 1080p. Make sure your base is set to your monitor and then your scaled is whatever you want to record at. So if I wanted to go to 720p, I'd set my output scaled resolution down to 720p, but I'm leaving it at 1080p. Um, downscale filter, just put this on Lancazos. It's the best. It gives the nicest sharpness. If it looks too sharp to you, you can reduce it because I know some people think it can look too sharp for me it looks fine um and this only really happens this only really affects it if you're going to scale anyway so i don't think it matters for me but i put it on the best anyway and then put your fps to whatever you want to record at so typically that's going to be either 60 or 30 um for youtube so yeah 60 is the best 30 if you can't record at 60 hotkeys set these as you want i don't have any i just press the buttons manually and then an advanced here i put my process priority to high because I like to make sure that OBS has all the resources it get it can get. So this means that if the if when running a CPU intensive game, um, the CPU power the CPU goes up to you know near 100%, which does happen sometimes. I do have a slightly older CPU. Um, it means that the game will lag before OBS will, and you might think that's bad, but honestly, the game can take a few FPS of stutter. If the game gets more process priority than OBS, then your OBS recordings will come out and they'll be stuttery and horrible, and you don't want that. So it's better to drop the FPS a little bit in your game and maintain OBS recording at its constant frame rate. It's a lot better. Renderer, leave it at Direct 3D. I don't even have another option here, but you might have OpenGL or something like that here. Color format, MV12 works fine, you don't need to bump it up at all. It can just weigh down your system for no reason. YUV color space, this is really optional, like for you guys. I run 709 in my color space, which is a higher color space, um, but I only use parcel color range, and this gives me the nicest looking colors. If I put it on full, everything becomes a bit dark. So I'd say just try some recordings, mixing these up, and see what looks best for you. Just do, you know, some just 10 second test recordings, and just see what works best for you. That's the best way to do it. Um, and then all of this stuff is just not important for me. Okay, so you've got your settings set up. Next, we'll jump into the mixer. So you should see your three audio devices here. So desktop audio one, two, and my mic. Go into the mixer. Make sure these are all, you know, 100. We can adjust the volume in our editing afterwards. Um, you can pan them left and right, which I don't want to do. You can change the sync of stuff. So maybe if you're recording stuff through like a... Um, through like an Elgato or something, and there might be a slight delay of your game audio to you, of your game audio to your mic audio. You could set a sync offset that can work for you. I only record PC, so it's fine. There is no need in syncing. And then you decide here which tracks you're going to put on, uh, which tracks you're going to put each thing on. So I've got my desktop audio on track one, my mic on track two, and my desktop audio two in track three. So that just will decide which track everything goes in when you then put it into an audio editing software so you can adjust the levels as you please, which is really, really helpful. Now, in my previous videos, I've got so many comments of like, oh, I can't get my game recording and it's just not working. 
So I'm going to show you now here all of the ways you can record a game, basically from best to worst way, depending on what's working for you. So what you want to do first is you want to go here, you want to, on, on scenes, right click, go add, and then you can enter, you can make a scene. So you'd, make, you'd call it whatever you want, and then you'd press OK. So I've got one here, it's called PC Game Green Screen. This is just for something I had testing a while back. It doesn't really matter what the name is, obviously, it's just down to you guys. And then in here, in sources, I'm actually going to delete this. So I don't want that right now. Um, I'm going to go to add, and then you've got a bunch of different things you can add here. The main thing you want to try first is game capture. So you've got your game open, ideally at this point. And go to mode. I like to do this. I like to go to mode. I like to go to capture specific window. And then in the window, you'll have all of your different uh, windows here, like my hashtag United States of Trump Town, um, which is my <laughs> Discord server with a weird name i know spotify and everything else so your game should show up here ideally if it's compatible most I, almost all games i've done are compatible you click that and then hopefully it should show up now if it doesn't you know try alt tabbing in try it try it try it loads of times and stuff if it's still not working then we have to try another thing so what we can try now is run your game in maybe windowed mode or borderless mode and like so go to add and go to display capture and there we go, and we got a a slight uh, mirror effect, whereas the never-ending windows, basically, because it's recording window upon window upon window. And then you can record basically your whole display. Now, this won't be as um, efficient, and you might get some drops, but if this is the only way you can record a game, then that's kind of tough. Also, if your game, maybe you're playing a game like Minecraft, um, there is also the possibility of using a window capture, which kind of works like game capture, but it captures a specific window. And if you're running a windowed game, like maybe not running Minecraft in full screen, you could try recording using this as well. So these are the three options I would go with. Anyway, guys, that is the end of this tutorial. I think I've covered everything. Um, another thing you can do, I may as well mention this now. I haven't mentioned this in any previous tutorials. You can set up profiles and scene collections. So scene collections are basically different collections of different scenes and sources. So you can set up loads of different ones for different streams and different recording methods. And profiles are profiles of settings. So for example, I could have a 720p profile, I could have a 1080p profile, where I just click between the two, and then I don't need to go back in and redo all the settings. And I've just got a message on Discord. So I'm going to end this uh, here. And also, obviously, you press start recording once you've done all that to record. I know this has been a slightly longer one. And I know I do get some comments on these videos saying, oh, it's too long and all this stuff. But then I also get the comments saying, oh, it's not working and stuff. So just pay attention to everything I've said. If after trying all this stuff, it still doesn't work, then I will try and answer your comments. So leave a comment below and I'll, I'll be glad to help you out. If this video has helped you out, then please do leave a live like rating. That would be really appreciated. And also, maybe sub to the channel. I've got a lot of new videos coming out very soon. Um, I've got a lot of stuff in the works and projects I want to work on. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can stick around. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Goodbye.